Hey parents, how are you? It's Mr. Galliano. Ms. Bolcax. Ms. Merville. We know that as parents, one of the most stressful things is not uh, always being aware of the expectations for learning. Our teachers in each grade have prepared a video so you'll be able to know what is expected of your child in the following year. Sit back and enjoy the show. Enjoy. Bye. Welcome to Pre-K. The Pre-K teachers are following the Pre-K Foundation for the Common Core Units of Study. As your children begin Pre-K, always make sure to check your child's Google Classroom for any teacher announcements or other learning from home activities that can be done. Part of the Pre-K classroom management system is to have a detailed classroom schedule, have classroom jobs that children choose from, and labeled centers. Here's our schedule. From 8, 10 a.m. to 9 a.m., arrival and breakfast. From 9 to 9.40 a.m., gross motor skills. From 9.40 to 9.55, morning meeting. From 10 a.m. to 11.10 a.m., center time in small groups. 11.20 a.m. to 12 p.m., hand washing and lunch. 12.10 to 1 p.m., nap slash quiet time. 1 p.m. to 1.50 p.m., center time. And from 1.50 p.m. to 2.10 p.m. is our closing meeting and dismissal. Some activity suggestions to do for homework would be to read a book with your child every night, to review alphabet letters and sounds, review numbers and quantifying, reviewing shapes and shape attributes, and fine motor practice, including cutting. You can even do scavenger hunts where children can look for shapes and names and numbers. To prepare for September, practice fine motor skills. How does your child use scissors? Do they have the proper pencil grasp and with other writing tools like crayons and markers? Use different crayon sizes and see how they do. Practice other fine motor skills like playing with Play-Doh and Play-Doh tools. If you have, let them build alphabet and number formations. And talk about proper hygiene and hand washing routines with your child. This will help them assimilate into the classroom culture and classroom routines. We can't wait to meet your children. Hi, I'm Ms. Varka. I'm a kindergarten teacher, and I bet you're all excited that your children are coming in next year as kinder students. In this grade, we happen to see the most growth because many students come in not knowing their letters and leaving knowing how to read. But we do have to warn you that it's not the kindergarten that you guys knew as children. But it's very rigorous, but it's also a lot of fun. Hi, I'm Mrs. Napolitano, also a kindergarten teacher, and I just want to talk about some things that you can do with your child at home to prepare them for kindergarten. First and most importantly is read every day to your child or have your child read and talk about the book to, um, to you. Next is your child should know how to write their first name. All upper caps is great, but if they do know how to do the first letter uppercase, the rest lowercase, that's even better. Um, children should be able to recognize all uppercase letters and know most of their lowercase letters. So recognize meaning the name and if they know their sounds, that's even better. Um, children should understand parts of a book. They should know where the pictures are, where the cover is. They should know um, the difference between a word and a letter. And they should know that we read from left to right. Children should also be able to talk about the book, whether they're reading, doing a picture walk, talking about the pictures, or um, if someone was reading to them. So really engage them in that conversation. What was your favorite part? Why did you like it? What happened in this story? And most importantly is just to continue to build that independence with your child and talk and love on them every single day. Hi, I'm Ms. Tantori. I'm Ms. Ed Sapante. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I'm Ms. Sapante, the kindergarten special ed teacher. And we'd like to give you guys some tips and pointers to help your kid when they come into kindergarten with phonics. Phonics is so important. They're going to learn so much. So we always think about making our learning fun in school, so we have some ideas for you. 
They have lots of apps you can go on so they can learn their letters and sounds. And you can make it different games. You can get fly swatters and say, hey, let's play a game. Let's swat the letter that says ah, and they can hit it with the fly swatters. You can play memory with index cards. So they can learn out their letters. You could in the store all around. Oh, what do you notice? Oh, that's a stop sign. Oh, it says S in front. And give them different ways to play at home. You could do hot lava and write words on the floor and they can jump and skip around the house. Make learning fun. And remember that kindergarten is going to be an awesome, exciting journey. Some other ways to make it fun would be um, you could do an indoor snow, snow fight. So you could put a letter in the snowball and when they catch that snowball or when they get hit by the snowball, they could catch it and they could tell you the sound or you can even do that with sight words. Um, um, the easy ones at I am in. Just so when they come in, they have a little bit of understanding of what we're gonna show them. Um, and then YouTube videos. YouTube videos are the best thing. You have Jack Hartman and some other ones that are out there that helps them with sounds um, and it could always be for fun. So it doesn't have to be a lesson. And that's what kindergarten is Yay! About. Can't wait to see your kid this September. Hi, I'm Mr. Carolla, and I think I speak for everybody of the 304 family when I say we're super excited to welcome in your kindergarten student. Let's talk to you a little bit about, today, uh, about math today. So when you're home with your kids, uh, it would be great if you practice counting, if children were able to count from one to 10 at least. Because in kindergarten, they're gonna learn so much in math. By the end of the year, we're gonna be counting up to 100. It's gonna be really cool. Um, also, we do a lot of sorting. So you can do that at home with your children. It could be household items. You can have them count like and sort spoons or anything in the house. Get them moving. I, I find that's the best way to get them to learn. There's a lot of teachers in 304 that use a lot of hands-on type of math and that really makes it sink in. So we're looking forward to having you students. Hi, my name is Ms. Aponte. I'm the special ed kindergarten teacher and I'm here to talk about writing. So your boys and girls will be starting the year with drawing and then labeling and then figuring out what kind of census they wanna to write to support that drawing and that labeling and whatever theme or subject we're talking about. So at home, you could practice writing. They could practice even doing lines so their strengths for their hands could be there when it's time for them to come into school and have them draw. Keep drawing anything, anything that happens at home. You go to a birthday party. What did you do at the birthday party? Can you draw it for me? Can you label? What is that? What did you draw? Always be positive about what they draw so they'll be excited to tell you what exactly it is. And this way they could explain and you can help prompt them to do a sentence. So that's the best thing to do over the summer. Hey, soon-to-be first graders. Are you ready to see all the awesome things you're going to learn and do in first grade? Whoop, whoop, I know you are. So what does reading time look like in first grade? There are so many books to choose from. And as you get to be a better reader, your books get even better and more interesting with characters and problems or more facts. You can sit and read with a partner. You can read by yourself. You can sit on the rug and read. Or you get to read with a teacher and show them what you know. That's my favorite part. Did you guys have centers in kindergarten? Guess what? In first grade, we have centers too. We have literacy centers. During literacy centers, you get to read books with a friend. You even get to do reader's theater where you can put on a play, maybe some puppets. You get to play with magnetic letters, listen to sounds. Who wants to go on the computer? You get to do that in centers too. Sometimes you get to work with teachers to make you a better reader and writer. But wait, we don't only have literacy centers, we have math centers too. In math centers, you get to use all kinds of cool stuff like counters and hundred charts, snap cubes. Who likes to roll the dice? We use those in centers. We even use dominoes and play cards. First grade is fun. 
I bet in kindergarten you listen to your wonderful teacher read you stories. In first grade, your teacher will read you stories too. And now that you're big kids, you can share your ideas with the class. Can you stand in front of the class and tell them your ideas? I bet you can, big first graders to be. Hey parents, this is an example of a typical day in first grade. Probably not much different than kindergarten. Math and reading and writing, we do some type of lesson. Pull small groups for all subjects. Many hands-on activities in centers. We still use big books too to teach fluency, teach some phonic skills, comprehension. In first grade, we take the skills they learned in kindergarten and build upon them. Here is a chart of the reading benchmarks for kindergarten and first grade. First grade students should come in about a level D. D books have sight words, simple plots, CBC words. By the end of first grade, students will be reading an I, J, or K. These books have chapters, more character development, problem solution. First grade is a great year to see beautiful reading growth. We cannot wait to meet you guys next year. First grade is great. Read this summer, keep practicing your sight words, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Hello and welcome to second grade. This year, we are going to be focusing on lots of phonics. There's immense growth in phonics in second grade. Throughout the year, we're going to be building on everything that was taught throughout kindergarten and first grade and expanding on strategies for decoding, during reading and writing multisyllabic words. Please refer to the following phonetic strategies that are listed below. Long and short vowels, silent E at the end of a word, Endings, suffixes like ing, ed, es, s, and ly are controlled vowels. Blends and digraphs, both in beginning and ends of words, and vowel teams are all very important throughout the year of second grade. Math, big year for adding and subtracting. By the end of second grade, students should know their math facts in a snap to 20, both addition and subtraction. That's no counting, just knowing them right off the bat. When they come into second grade, they should know their math facts, addition and subtraction through 12. Um, we actually go all the way up to adding three digit numbers by the end of the year with regrouping. We work on place value up to the thousands, so we do hundreds, tens, and ones. We work on time and money, and problem solving using different strategies is a big focus in second grade. Reading. Coming into second grade, students should leave can, uh, first grade at a level I. J or K would be ideal, but a level I usually is typical when they enter second grade. This year, we work on many skills, comprehension, fluency, expression, word solving strategies for independence, comprehension strategies to understand. We work on characters, their feelings and their traits. We work on story problems and solutions. And by the end of the second grade, students should be le leaving reading uh, level L or M independently. In writing, we have various units throughout the year. We focus on narrative, realistic fiction being a big unit, nonfiction, expert books, and opinion writing. We write letters and reviews. Students should be able to write across three pages. We make booklets. They should be able to write and complete sentences using capitalization and correct punctuation and spacing. And they should be able to edit their own work. That means to reread it and revise. Second grade is an exciting year and we look so forward to working with your students. Hi, 
Hi, it's Miss McGuire and Miss Sinanaj, and we're here to talk to you about third grade expectations and how you can prepare your child over the summer. So by the end of the third grade, uh, your child should be fluent in multiplication, facts. This will help them when moving on to more complex multiplication and division problems. During the summer, you should definitely work on addition and subtraction within 1,000 because once they come in, in September, we'll jump right into the more difficult math concepts. Uh, fluently adding and subtracting within 20 is also important. They should be able to add numbers like 6 and 4 immediately, 8 and 2, 18 and 2, 16 and 4. So they should be able to do those um, simple adding fluently within their heads, quickly with a snap. Make sure that they are, under, they are understanding place value as well. If it's a three digit number, what's the highest place value? It would be the hundreds place, then the tens place, and then the ones place. Once they come in in September, we will review a lot of those concepts, and then we will start the multiplication and division concepts. Over the summer, you can work on grouping objects together to kind of begin to have them acknowledge the concept of basic multiplication and basic division. If you order a, a pie of pizza, then you can ask them, well, how many will each person get if each person, if the pie has eight slices? So anything you can do to work with them daily during the summer in the real world would be great. For reading, by the end of third grade, we want the kids to ideally be on a level M. However, if your child is not at that level, that's okay too. But it's extremely important to read over the summer because we see sometimes when the kids haven't really read over the summer, they'll go down when we test them again in September and forget some of the strategies that they were taught. So we know, you know, it's summer break, but we really want them to consider read consistently when they can 20 minutes a day however long they have just to not lose strategies and skills that they learned in the second grade a lot of um third grade reading is going to talk about characters problems solution so while while your child is reading it helps to stop them and ask them a few questions what they've read what they might think might happen next and if they're reading nonfiction. We really focus a lot on main idea and supporting details. So you might want to have them read a chunk and ask them what it was mostly about. But the main thing for reading is that they really do get to spend time over the summer reading and answering questions about the books that they're reading. They could use Mayan, they can use um, books from the library, anything, magazines, just to make sure that they don't lose any strategies. And in writing, we will be writing narratives, informational pieces, persuasive speeches, and opinion writing pieces. Basically what you need to do over the summer is just make sure that your child is jotting down something uh, frequently, whether it be weekly or bi-weekly. They should sit, make up a story, um, make sure that they have complete sentences in their writing. Definitely try not to help them too much with spelling. You really want them to try to sound out the words on their own and use the strategies that they learned in second grade to figure out how to spell words, especially, you know, coming into third, we're not, we try not to give them so much assistance with the spelling. We want them to really practice chunking words together, breaking down words and sounding them out on their own. And if you have them right over the summer, you can you know, reinforce that every sentence starts with a capital letter, every sentence ends with punctuation. So they're kind of ready to jump right in when they get in September. And as always, if you have any questions, you can reach out to anyone at PS304 and we will definitely be willing to help you. I know that the second grade teachers have provided so many wonderful resources for your children. So I think that jumping into the third grade next year will be a piece of cake for them. Thank you so much for your time.
Good evening, incoming fourth grade families. My name is Ms. Jamello, and I'm here with the fourth grade team, Ms. Casalayo, Ms. Marshall, and Ms. Becky Young. And tonight we are going to review some of the expectations for next year in the fourth grade. In class, we follow reading, writing, and math workshops. Students are taught a whole group mini lesson daily. After the lesson, they are given independent work to check for understanding. Students are then working in small groups with teachers or working with peers on leveled activities. For reading and writing, we have a workshop that consists of three parts. The first part is the mini lesson, which is a whole class lesson, which is about 10 minutes. The students then move into independent work where they engage in a reading or writing activity and other students are pulled for a small group. This lasts for about 30 minutes. Then we come back and we share. We reflect on what was taught during those lessons. Fourth grade students are in for a real treat. When we explore our fiction unit, students will learn to grow deeper ideas about their characters. For our nonfiction unit, we research the weather. For reading history, we explore the American Revolution. We also incorporate a test prep unit for reading and writing to prepare our students for the state tests. We finish the year with a unit on historical fiction. For our math program, we use Envision Math. The lesson of the day goes as follows. Problem of the day, then we have our mini lesson, independent work, and small group. The following are our math units for the year leading up to the test and after. We would love for you guys to continue to prepare for fourth grade throughout the summer. Here are some ways to do that. Please continue to read throughout the summer master your multiplication facts, and practice writing by keeping a daily journal. Thank you for meeting with us today, and we can't wait to see you next year. Hello, parents and guardians, and welcome to our presentation for getting ready for grade five. As a grade, the teachers brainstormed different qualities and, and attributes that we look forward to the students having and internalizing throughout the year and things that will really make them strong learners and thinkers in fifth grade. Some of these are like leadership, responsibility, collaboration, organization, communication, independence, critical thinking, accountability, and above all, integrity. As a team, we feel that these things will make them stronger students and more prepared to be fifth graders, and above all, get them ready to be going to middle school. We also brainstormed some things that will be coming up in fifth grade reading. The independent reading levels that your students will be expected to be meeting throughout the year in September level S and January level T and June level U. The reading skills that we pulled are skills that will be getting them to these levels, ex expectations that will help them to reach these goals. Some of these skills are noticing that characters are complicated and grow theories about characters and use text evidence to support each theory. Also, thinking about the way secondary characters influence the main characters. Analyzing relationships between main characters and minor characters. Studying settings like characters. Thinking about what the setting represents to each character and each part of the story. Studying the way characters respond to their problems and noticing when they change. Following social issues and determining lessons or themes of stories. Figuring out who is telling the story, who's the narrator, and be able to write ideas about their story. Not just summarize it, but state an idea, support it with details and evidence, and use things like quotes and paraphrasing in order to do so. In fifth grade math, these are some content areas, um, skills and content areas we'll be working on. All of the fifth grade content requires mastery of multiplication. It is vital that students know their multiplication facts. If you can do anything for your students to get them ready is to practice and practice and memorize the multiplication facts 1 through 12. The content areas that we'll be focusing on are numbers and computation, measurement and data, operations and algebra, and geometry. Some of the topics that fall into those content areas are understanding place value, multi-digit multiplication and division within whole numbers, multi-digit addition subtraction, multiplication and division with decimals, 
and using equivalent fractions to add and subtract fractions, multiplying and dividing fractions, representing and interpreting data, and understanding volume, converting measurements, and writing and interpreting numerical expressions. Many of these topics and content areas are building off of what your students have already learned in third and fourth grade, and we will look forward to pushing them to meet that next level. Again, we send our best wishes to you over the summer, and thank you so much for all of your help in getting your students ready. We look forward to meeting your students and working with you all in the upcoming year. Take care. For our future 304 Dragonflies, remember, besides getting prepared academically, we want you prepared to be a leader in your learning at PS304. Be sure to familiarize yourself with our Dragonflies Rise PBIS system so that you know the key behaviors of what a 304 learner exemplifies. Thank you so much for watching. We wish you a wonderful summer. See you in September.